Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spudknocker, as always, and today we're trying out a new intro for the channel and see what you guys think about it. I'd like to thank everyone for the feedback you gave me on the uh, I'm Back video, and I think that'll definitely help me uh, figure out what you guys want for my channel going forward. We've got a ton of new stuff uh, over the summertime uh, in DCS World, especially since my last optimization video. Uh, such as this beautiful sandstorm in, on the Persian Gulf map as we follow these IRI AF F5E Tigers as they patrol the Strait of Hormuz on this beautiful but crappy weather day. So you guys may have noticed the aspect of my screens has been changing. I went from ultra wide to uh, standard back to ultra wide again. Um, and that is because I've been moving around a lot as also a part of my absence. Um, I was using a crappy TV for a while for my videos. I was using an older panel and now I'm back to my uh, rather new 2560 by 1080 ultra wide with G-Sync and up to 144 frames per second, etc. So I would like to start this video off by letting you guys know that if you have a regular 10, 1920 by 1080 screen or maybe your computer components are not the highest end, I would still go back to my previous optimization video that you can find linked here or down in the, in the description below. Um, you also notice I have two FPS counters going on for this little cinematic section. Um, I would stick with the FPS from the NVIDIA Shadowplay down in the left-hand corner. I'm just monitoring temperatures and things in the top left with CAM software. I do have a new case that all my components are in, and normally that wouldn't affect any performance issues except for this case has a few more uh, case fans to allow for some extra cooling. I've noticed some lower temperatures as a result. So this video is going to be more for your high-end types of computers running DCS World with a more high-end screen, uh, such as the ultra-wide that I'm using here. Uh, saw in the feedback that you guys do like the ultra-wide format, even on YouTube. Uh, I was a little bit worried about that, but uh, going forward, I think I'm going to try and stick with that. Hopefully I can uh, bring my panel to uh, where I'm going to be living next. So we'll go ahead and let this uh, beautiful scene with these tigers continue to play. And then once that's over in a minute or so, we will go ahead and get right into the optimization stuff. So enjoy, guys. Okay guys, so first thing we're going to take a look at is the settings panel here in DCS World. Like I said before, this is going to be more for your, your higher end kind of systems. If you want, if you have a lower end system, uh, maybe a little bit older CPU, a little bit older monitor, something of that nature, please go ahead and check out my previous video, like I already said. Link is down below in the, in the description, and that will definitely help you out a lot more than uh, these settings will. But if you have a high end panel, panel with G-Sync, FreeSync, has a high uh, hertz uh, capability to it, this, this will be for you. So first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and go on up to our options. You notice I have the L39 in the background. I like that music the best to have in the background personally. Um, so we'll go ahead and go through these settings just like I did in the previous video and kind of give my rationale for those. So first thing, textures. Of course, I have those set to high just like the previous video. Nice to have good textures in the cockpit, on the jets, on stuff on the ground, on shit you're blowing up, you know, all that good stuff. Training textures, gonna be high again. You know, I've got the system to be able to run it, so want the, everything to look as good as possible. Civilian traffic, I have that actually turned on to high. That's something new. Um, I think this is actually really, really well optimized. I have noticed almost no difference in FPS. So that's a little bit of an update from the previous video. 
So set that as you wish. I think it looks really good on the new Persian Gulf map because it's a bustling city. You're flying over Dubai, you're flying over Abu Dhabi, all these places, as well as, you know, there's going to be civilians on the ground in Iran uh, driving around. It is kind of funny though when you have a military convoy on a highway and you're bombing it and there's civilian cars going by. Um, that is something interesting that I think would be cool if ED could figure out how to, you know, get those cars to get out of the way or at least stop, you know, something like that. Water, have set to high. You know, the water in DCS world is super beautiful um, and it looks really realistic, especially when you're on the carrier, you're landing a Harrier on the Tarawa, you're landing on the Stennis, something like that. Always nice to have really good looking water. Visible range, I leave that on high. Ultra and extreme, I really don't see much of a difference there, so why not tax the system as less as we can, or sorry, as little as we can, and that way we can get to as many frames as we can for a minimal loss of uh, visual fidelity. Heat blur, I have that set to low. I does, do think that tends to take off about 10 frames per second if you have that set to high for not very much of a visual improvement. So we'll just keep that on low. Shadows, I keep on low. Um, you're really only going to see that when you're taxiing on the ground. Things may not look awesome, but there's a shadow. You really only and you'll still notice, you know, a shadow on the ground if you're flying low level across the Zagros Mountains in Iran or something like that. You'll see, you'll still see that, no problem. Resolution, of course, that's going to be your monitor. Aspect ratio, same with your monitor. That'll be um, selected by default. Monitor's got one screen. Resolution of cockpit displays. Um, I don't find that I have an issue reading the cockpit displays. Um, you can set it to every frame or 1024. Um, I'd find that 512 works just fine. If you can see it and it looks good, why not leave it there and tax the system as little as possible. MSAA, this is very new from the last video. If you have a high-end system with a really beautiful high-end panel, definitely turn MSAA off because without any anti-aliasing at all, my panel, the new one I have, looks pretty fantastic. So MSAA just taxes the system, so we'll leave that off. Depth of field, of course, that's going to be off. I don't think it looks very good, and it's a massive tax on our system. Lens effects, I leave that on flare. I think the flare looks pretty good. Dirt, not so much. Maybe if you're doing a cinematic with uh, helicopters landing or something like that, that would be pretty cool. Um, so I just leave that on flare. It really doesn't tax the system very much, in my opinion. Motion blur, that's new as well. I definitely leave that off. It uh, looks very strange to me. I don't think it's totally optimized yet, which is fine. If it looks better in the future, maybe we'll change that. Okay, SSAA, that's something very new uh, to DCS World. And for your high-end panels, it's a really good thing to have. Of course, it relates uh, back up to our MSAA that I have set to off. SSAA simply, in your graphics card, it renders the scene at 1.5 times the resolution, or if you prefer two times the resolution of your actual monitor, and then downscales that. Um, and while downscaling it, it kind of smooths out those jaggies as, as it does that. It doesn't affect your performance uh, soup, a ton at 1.5. It will You will noticeably see a, um, a deficit in, de in performance at times two. The 1.5, it just smooths out those edges really perfectly um, on my panel at least, uh, on, on a lot of high-end, more high-resolution panels. Um, if you're still using a 1920 by 1080 panel, maybe a lower end um, panel, more on the starter range, definitely I would stick with MSAA, even though it, it affects your performance a little bit more, you'll get a bit more of an anti-aliasing effect um, that will help you out. So moving up to our right hand side here, um, actually we'll start down here. Anzeotrophic filtering, um, that shows you or gives you uh, just better tech looking textures when they're at an angle offset from what you're looking at rather than straight on. Um, I leave that at eight times. Um, at two times I notice a lot of shimmers, four times the same thing. 16 times I don't really notice the difference, so I just kind of split it and go with eight times. Um, I think it still looks great, as well as there's no uh, noticeable effect on performance. Terrain object shadows, this relates back to our shadows over here. Shadows here relates to objects, tanks, airplanes, uh, buildings, things like that. But your terrain object shadows are going to be like uh, your default terrain buildings, trees, uh, mountains, things like that. I leave to default, uh, because if you don't have that on default, your mountains are going to look 
very strange without uh, shadows on them. Uh, this is really important for desert maps like um, Persian Gulf or NTTR. If you don't have shadows on those, the mountains are going to look very strange. Global Cockpit Illumination, also a relatively new thing. Um, I leave that to off. Um, it's up to you uh, whether you need that or not. Uh, um, rain droplets, of course I have that on. Looks really cool. Kind of a funny bug where raindrops that actually show up on your HUD as well in the Harrier. I think that's fixed at the moment, but uh, so definitely I have those on. Aero interface, I have searched and searched and searched and not found any explanation as to what that is. So why not disable it? Um, I think it may have something to do with VR. I don't use VR. So we'll just kind of scratch that off the list. V-Sync, because I have G-Sync, I turn that off. No reason to have that on. Full screen, of course, I have that on. Some people say it doesn't necessarily work, so Alt-Enter to make sure it's in full screen mode. Um, and you'll notice a little uptick in FPS once you do that. So do that but when you jump into a mission uh, before you get started, and you'll be good to go. Scale GUI, uh, that's another one uh, more for VR or um, systems that uh, have strained resolutions. Uh, in order to scale the menu system, uh, relative to your panel or your VR headset, things like that. So I don't have any need for that, so I leave that off. Okay, so moving back up to our sliders here. Clutter and grass, I have that just at 1180, I guess. It's just kind of an arbitrary number I picked. Um, have that all the way probably wouldn't change very much. Having it all the way down is good if you have a lower end system that uh, just can handle having that clutter and grass on the taxiways as you taxi to the airport. Trees visibility, I have that set to 75%. Um, if I'm going to be, know I'm going to be playing on the caucuses, I probably will pull that down, especially in multiplayer, so maybe to about 60%, uh, because the trees visibility on the caucuses definitely takes a toll on uh, your FPS. Preload radius, this is another important one, especially if you're in multiplayer. Um, a lot of the official word from ED has said that if you're having really long load times in uh, getting into a multiplayer server and getting into the cockpit and ready to go. Make sure that you try chopping your preload radius in half. I've recently put this up a little bit more since I've been in single player and making a couple of single player videos. So if you're, if I were to hop into multiplayer, I'd probably chop this down to about 5,000. Um, it's not a huge preload radius, but it'll definitely get me in the cockpit and start it faster. Um, I may just have a couple stutters when it tries to uh, preload another radius around my aircraft when I kind of reach the edge of that. Usually it's not super noticeable, especially if you've got DCS on an SSD. Chimney smoke density, I really don't see a big difference between one and say the higher numbers, so I just leave that at one. Gamma, this is totally personal preference. I leave that at about 1.5. I've changed it based on the map I'm on. Uh, when Normandy first came out, I like to make it a little bit brighter um, and then bring it back down to a little bit darker on if I was going to play, say, on NTTR. But for now, um, with the graphics settings and the system we have now in the recent updates, 1.5 seems to be the best kind of all-around setting for you. Or sorry, for me, uh, based on any map I'm on, any aircraft I'm in. So that's it for the in-game settings, we'll go ahead and move on out to the NVIDIA control panel. But before we do, another big tip, make sure you have DCS on a solid state drive. Having it on a hard drive is going to really tank your frames per second. It's going to make it almost impossible to play in multiplayer, all this kind of stuff. Um, whether that's fair or not is not for my, you know, not, not for me to decide, but it's uh, just kind of the nature of the beast with this high-end flight simulator. So make sure you got that on an SSD and you'll encounter a lot less problems when it comes to performance. So we'll go ahead and head on out to our NVIDIA control panel. Alrighty guys, so we're here in the NVIDIA control panel and first thing I'd like to mention is in the previous video people were asking, wondering why I was in global settings instead of program specific settings. And that's simply because DCS World is really the only game um, I play on my gaming PC, and so if I get into more PC games, maybe IL2 or something else like that, uh, maybe I'll go ahead and move over to, over to program settings, but for now it's just not necessary, so I haven't bothered with it. 
Um, so we'll go through a couple of these. These are very much more complicated settings uh, than are in the in-game control panel in DCS world, and they definitely require some more uh, you know, studying to try and get right. Um, so I'm just gonna go a quick run through and uh, just kind of point out the ones that I think are important. Ambient inclusion, that's off. Um, doesn't do anything for DCS world, so we have it off. Anxiotrophic filtering, I let, uh, I let NVIDIA take over that for the most part. I have that set to 16 times. Um, I may pull that back down to eight, I have noticed a little bit of a degradation in my performance as of late with that set to 16, but uh, we'll, we'll see. FXAA, we definitely want to have that off. You definitely want to have that off um, because all it does is simply blur, a little, put a little blur on everything. Uh, it's a, especially in global settings, it'll put it on text here that we're seeing. It'll put it in your game. It'll put it on a web page. everything. Um, and things will look just slightly fuzzy. And that is to kind of take the edge off of some jaggies. And it's very low impact, so it's really good for low, lower end systems. But uh, if you have a really nice graphics card and you have a stomping, you know, CPU, uh, definitely don't want to turn those on. Gamma correction I have on. I haven't really noticed a big difference, but if it's uh, correct in color, why not have it on? Anti-aliasing mode. I have this set to enhance application settings. Of course, I have that set to zero in the game, and I have the settings set to two times. So. If it's doing anything, it's just simply adding a little bit of MSAA to on top of that SSAA um, to just smooth out anything remaining. More, more likely, it's not doing anything at all uh, because I have it set to off in the game. However, I can't know that for sure because I'm not really a complete expert in, in all of this stuff. Anti-aliasing transparency, you have this set to two. Um, I think it helps make things like canopies, um, MFDs, seeker heads, the DMT uh, cover on the nose of the Harrier, like we can see out here on my desktop. Um, things like that tend to look a little better with a little bit of transparency, anti-aliasing. Anti Let's see what else we got here. This one will only pop up if you have a monitor that is has G-Sync on it or has some sort of a, uh, a FPS adjuster to uh, match your graphics card. I have that set to G-Sync because my monitor is set up for G-Sync, so that's what I've got. Multi-frame anti-aliasing is set to off. Um, the S SSAA in-game and the little tiny bit of MSAA in NVIDIA uh, panel here is totally fine. Preferred refresh rate is gonna be highest available. This refers to the monitor I have, that's the product number. Um, Shader cache set to on helps uh, helps you out by creating a cache of shaders on your disk, um, and that can help you know recall shaders back into the graphics card uh, in case you get out of an area where a shader is no longer needed. And so it has that preloaded for you. Anzeotrophic sample optimization I have that set to off, and uh, that helps with uh, uh, shimmering uh, when you have track IR like I do there's shimmers everywhere. So every little bit of settings or tweak you can get out to reduce shimmers uh, definitely helps. And so I don't know if you've noticed in a lot of my videos, it is quite shimmery, especially fences in on the NTTR map and uh, trees on the Normandy map, just shimmer like nobody's business. Uh, and that's just because of my track IR, not necessarily an issue with DCS world itself. Texture filtering quality, I have that set to quality. Uh, negative LOD bias set to clamp. Uh, these things just help uh, give you this best picture as possible. Quality here is not high quality, just so we can get a little bit more FPS out of that. Uh, nothing huge. Let's see, triple buffering, buffering has set to off. Vertical sync is off because I am using G-Sync. Virtual reality parameter frames doesn't matter for me because I'm not using VR. So that's pretty much it when it comes to the NVIDIA control panel and what we have set there. So we'll go ahead and move on to a few places you can find information about how uh, to get the best performance possible from your setup in DCS world. Uh, and these resources will definitely help you out. Alrighty guys, before we take a look at different resources that are out there for you to find uh, ways to optimize DCS world for your system, I'm going to address something 
is, and that is I'm not going to do a virtual memory section of this video like I had in the previous version. And that is simply because I now have 32 gigabytes of RAM in my system as opposed to the 16 I had before. And that is completely enough to run DCS World Multiplayer, um, all of that good stuff uh, without any issues. And so virtual memory is no longer needed in my system. Um, I, if you can, I would avoid using virtual memory um, to shore up your system with issues regarding multiplayer or single player. Um, and that is simply because on your SSD, um, it can lower your the service life of the SSD by simply having so many sequential read and writes coming off of the SSD. And you just wanna you know, make sure your components last as long as possible. So that would be that doubly true for a physical hard drive because the little arm would be reading and writing so much. And you just wanna avoid all that kind of uh, extra wear and tear that you can. It probably wouldn't make a noticeable difference, but it's better to be safe than sorry, right guys? Especially with these expensive computer components with our machines that we all put so much love and labor into. So without, without further ado, we'll go ahead and take a look at a few places you can find some good DCS World info. So the first place that I would look would be the Hoggit subreddit, um, and that is specifically devoted to DCS World and nothing else. Um, it's a great place to ask questions. It's a good place to look at the answers to other people's questions. That's a really good way to learn as well. Um, people are usually very responsive, get re uh, answers to questions pretty quickly, um, and people are usually very nice um, and willing to help. So um, definitely take a look at this one. You'll find DCS World News. You'll find stuff about modules. You'll find you know some general aviation news thrown in there. Uh, military aviation news, things like that. But mostly 98% of uh, Hoggett's gonna be just for DCS World and asking and answering those kinds of questions. So definitely take a look at it and uh, you won't be disappointed. The next place to look would be the Eagle Dynamics forums. Um, this one may, might take a little bit longer to get a question answered, but you may get um, an answer in more detail, or you may even get an answer directly from one of the representatives of Eagle Dynamics, whether that's WAGS or um, anyone else. So uh, you see there's different categories. Make sure you put uh, your question or your comment or your opinion in the right category, or it may be moved or deleted uh, to get rid of any you know, unnecessary stuff in the forums. Uh, so this is another awesome place. Um, this is a really good place, especially for news related to updates to DCS World, as well as modules and things like that. Um, so this is definitely a good place to look. Um, the places to look for specifically for optimizing your system for DCS World would be under the DCS World um, category rather than a sub module category, as well as down here in the input output guides and tutorials, as well as the PC hardware and related software uh, sections. So I hope this video helps you get the most out of DCS World uh, with your high-end system and your high-end panel. And uh, like I said before, uh, twice already, if, this, if you do have a lower-end system, maybe you've got a more starter um, kind of panel, no problem. Take a look at my older video that I've got linked down in the description below, and that might help you a little bit more than the settings that I have set up for my specific panel here. So uh, thanks a lot, guys, and uh, I'll see you soon.